Guys, what are we gonna look at today? We're gonna look at this Ganzo Adamanti, and I'm sorry if I don't sound real energetic. I am really excited about this knife, but as you guys know, I was in the hospital, just got out last night, um, and I don't have a lot of energy, so we're gonna see how this pans out. This might take a while to film. So uh, we already looked at its cousin. I carried it the whole time I was in the hospital. It's cousin, that is. So first day in pockets, it's 10 a.m. I got up at seven for a virtual doctor's appointment and I put this in my pocket. So let's take a look at what I've noticed so far, but we're not gonna do it here. You guys know what time it is. Turn down that volume because here comes a little bit of music. guys let's look at this now i'm not gonna lie to you i have not done much with this knife but i have been messing with it and playing with it and for first impressions a lot of times that's the big thing about it is how's it feel in hand how's it feel in pocket so that's what we're doing first impressions now, now you guys know that this has a cousin <clears throat> that is this firebird fh921 by ganzo that i've been carrying uh, you guys saw the first impressions. I know I promised you a cut test. It will probably go up tomorrow um, after this video, but I did do a cut test with that knife. Um, and so it's really similar in a lot of ways to that knife, but it is a different style blade shape and I kind of like it. This one is a frame lock versus a liner lock. It is a deeper carry pocket clip that I do not mind at all so far. It's, it's nice and deep carry. Uh, for you guys that are into that, but it's not so proud and tall. It's more like a standard bent clip. Guys, if you want a deep carry pocket clip on your knives, this would be one that I cannot argue with. Uh, in and out of pocket seems nice. It is a steel liner lock from what I can tell. I haven't checked it yet, so let's go ahead and look. I believe that these are steel liners, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, yeah. It is definitely a steel uh, steel frame, I'm sorry, steel framed frame lock, not steel liner, steel framed frame lock. Now I'm kind of curious, I'm pretty sure that that is a lock bar insert. And I'm, I'm just, I'm kind of curious why it has a lock bar insert, unless it was just to allow easier uh, access, or easier to put the, the detent ball in because I don't see a hole where the detent ball, typically when you see a detent ball, there's usually a hole on this side of it. So I do think that it's in that. Now this is the Adamanti. It is designed by a gentleman named Simpkin. So this is Simpkin design. Uh, it's Nefermat D2, it says. I'm not sure what that means. But once again, made by Ganzo. So this is a very different shape blade than that, uh, than that Firebird Knives one. Um, still a nice blade shape, comes down nice and slender. It is fairly thin behind the edge it feels uh it was fairly sharp i did touch it up on a ceramic rod uh i have some cutting i want to do with this but to tell you the truth i really don't have the energy to go out and cut up a bunch of cardboard right now so this is going to be relegated to small little duty tasks that i'm going to be doing while i'm sick um nice big swedge on the back of this the jimping is not bad it's actually pretty good it's just about the about the amount of jimping i would want it does have kind of that like sway back area right here a lot like here let's just look at it compared to the, to the fh see how this is really really pronounced i like that but i think that that would limit me on how i would carry it um and use it this has that same kind of thing going but not near as pronounced and i like it i like it a lot it's got a nice uh, flow to it. It's not quite as harsh or as deep as that. And in hand, really, really comfortable so far. Um, I put on jeans just so that we could hear it in and out of pocket in a pair of jeans because it's the first I've put on a pair of jeans. And it is not, you can't even hear it. It's just about the right amount of tension. Now I had this on in a pair of track pants for a bit. Um, looks like G10 scales on the show scale side. And then, you know, a nice stonewash on the lock bar side. 
and you do have a window breaker. Just notice that I never know. I did not notice that it had a window breaker. Small little lanyard hole inside that, so you don't have a hole going through like that a lot. That's a good thought. Um, it's not super heavy. I've had other steel liner or steel frame locks that were way heavier than this. And I'm going to tell you, I like the look of that, that just that chamfered area around here, but it does, it takes that sharp spot off uh, that I complained about on some knives. You can see that it's not really all that sharp on here. It's still a little sharp, but it takes a lot of it off. It makes it a lot softer it, and it makes, it provides a nice little look. It's, I, it catches your eye. You see that little pop. Like I said, uh, looks like a ceramic ball glass breaker. I, I think you kind of missed a chance here though. Um, that could have been done as a reversible because all you would have to do is just take that out and flip it. But hey, not going to complain too much because I'm right-handed. Uh, and they did do the lock bar, the, the cutout for the spring tension on a lock bar on the inside, which means it's nice and smooth. It's not going to catch your pants. Um, so yeah, so far, the only things I've really done with it, I cut up, I, I had to cut up a little bit. I did cut off my, um, I cut off my bracelets from being in the hospital with it. And I cut an apple because I wanted to get something in me for a little bit of, uh, I got to get my blood sugar back up because I don't have any energy. Uh, I've been real nauseous. I can't eat. Uh, as far as the shape, the handle shape, it's really comfortable in hand. It just, it fits just perfect. I've got a full four finger grip on it. Flipper tab does not seem to be an issue. Jimping on the flipper tab is just about perfect. And like I said, these, these first impression videos are always just kind of free flowing. Uh, you and I are just talking about it as I'm looking at it. Um, appears to be a G10 backspacer, a uh, pretty nice looking knife overall. And here's the thing. It's a nice little budget knife so far that I can see, and it seems to be pretty, pretty good at that, but it still have a little bit of uh, frills action on it. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Action was a little gritty and a little stiff when I first pulled it out of pocket. It's not quite fall shut. It's, uh, you get a little shake and it's, it'll drop. But um, I did put a drop of KPL Heavy on the detent and it seems to have smoothed up. I may have got a little bit too much. I need to wipe off that excess. Um, so I put, yeah, I got way too much of it on there. So um, it appears to be a ceramic detent ball as opposed to on this one, uh, steel. This is a, I'm pretty sure that's a steel detent ball, 90% sure uh, by looking at it. But um, action on this one is not bad. It's actually a little bit smoother than that the, the Firebird. Uh, like I said, not quite drop shut, but I, I haven't looked up price point on this, but I do know Ganzo knives are very affordable. So I don't think it's going to be that expensive. Um, I do like that blade shape. That's a really attractive blade shape. That's one of the things that got me when I pulled it out. And sometimes these swedges, and I haven't looked real close, sometimes these swedges will be a little off from side to side, and it is. That's the only problem when you do a big swedge like this. If you don't have it quite right, what happens is you wind up with some weirdness at the very tip. And you can see that they don't necessarily, if I can get it in focus, focus, they don't necessarily line up quite clearly. So you can see how this one kind of terminates before the actual point, And this one terminates right at the point. Like this one is just perfect-ish. And then this one is not quite, and there's a couple other little hiccups that I noticed in the, in the swedges. So are they perfect? No, but it is a budget knife and it still is attractive. And in the big scope of things, this does not affect anything really, uh, but it can lead to some asymmetrical appearance. So your edge can be perfectly good when you have these swedges that come down, if they're misaligned, you can have some asymmetry to the edge at the very tip and it'll make your tip look like it's asymmetrical when it really isn't. So in the big scope of things, that's not a big deal, especially in a budget knife. Um, and I really haven't found anything bad about this, uh, except that there is a little bit, like if you just pop that open, there's a little bit of a pop where the liner, or I'm sorry, where the frame lock doesn't lock up completely. Let me see if I can show you. Well, like I, I think I got it that time. But if you just kinda, if it doesn't pop open all the way, well, now it's not going to do it, but you can just kind of feel that, that frame. You can feel that lock slide over just a little bit when you flip it, no issue. Um, so it could be, you know, 
it, it just could be that, that maybe a little bit more tension on this is required, but the tension on that feels just pretty good. You got a good snap to it. It's not too heavy of a detent. It's also not a light detent where you might have it not deploy. I did that on purpose. I just kind of caught the flipper tab. So I haven't had it not deploy except that time. And I kind of did that on purpose to see if I could make it not deploy. And it's hard to get it to not deploy. And any other thing, sometimes in cheaper knives, you can feel there's sometimes there's some inconsistencies in the position of the bearings and you'll have a tight spot. And I'm not feeling that on this. Um, and it's just simply like a little tight spot as it goes through the action because it's a much cheaper knife, so there's not as much that goes into it. So, so far, I'm really digging this. Um, I really am. I, I like this a lot. And now that I'm seeing Ganzo is starting to do original designs and they're doing them pretty well, I'm going to say that they're they're going to be one of those knives that you got to look out for. So uh, you'll probably see more of these on this. This looks, this looks like a – I was watching – in the hospital, I was watching uh, a show about tuna – uh, about a uh, yellow yellowfin tuna and it kind of has that that whole shape to it i like that shape a lot it's a really really aerodynamic symmetrical shape and i like it a lot uh we'll see how this cuts hopefully hopefully i'll be able to have enough time you know I i'm going to give myself some time to rest but i will definitely get this in get some testing done we'll see how it cuts uh, like heavy cutting the d2 on it uh, you know, we'll see how the D2 holds up. If it's anything like this one, this one held up really well in a cut test. Uh, and I cut down some heavy cardboard packaging. So, guys, that's about all the energy I've got for right now. Oh, I wanted to mention this. One last thing. I like how they did this ample access. Even though it's a pretty skinny knife, it feels like you've got – it just feels so much bigger because you've got that scalloped out here and then opened up. And then they opened that up on that side too. So you have got ample access to that lock bar. And I dig that. I really like that. It makes it feel, it makes it feel bigger than it is because you've got good access. And if you've got big hands like me, some of those skinnier knives, even ones that I like a lot, uh, it, it can be a pain to get down in there and, uh, dis, you know, disengage that lock. So, all right, guys, there you go. The, uh, the Ganzo Adamanti. I will, uh, flip this around. We'll do some final thoughts and send you guys out about your way. So like I said at the table, guys, really similar to that uh, FH, or that Firebird Knives FH, what was it, 921? I had it in the video. I really can't remember. But it's really similar. I'm pretty sure from what Jared told me, it's the same designer. But this, I can't argue with Jared. He's, he's, he was telling me that these, these newer Ganzos are good, and I have to agree. And they have their actual designs. They're not something that they copied from someone else. So... I think they're going on the right track. Guys, that's it. I love you all. Keep it clean in the comment section. That's not how we do this, Mike. If you guys like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down, but try to tell me why. Can't change the content if you don't tell me what you don't like. Uh, if you want to support the channel, it's simple to like, share, subscribe, drop a comment, hit the bell icon. If you do hit that bell icon, make sure you've got notifications turned on your device or you won't get told about the, well, I'd like to say two, sometimes three things that go up a day, but I'm not sure how much stuff's going to go up right now. Um, other ways you can support the channel is a bunch of ways down below. First and foremost is my membership. It's tier based. Pick a tier that works best for you, gets you what you want out of the memberships. Everyone saves $5 off my sharpening service and everyone has access to my gilded server. And if you're a premium tier member, you have access to a sharpening tutorial series. I would really appreciate with the lack of content going up. If you guys would use my affiliate links down below, I have a Blade HQ affiliate link where you can purchase most of the things you've seen on the channel, but I have a lot of affiliate links down there with a lot of EDC gear. And the final way is I have a merchandise store on Ember Shirt Co. Anything you purchase on Ember, Ember Shirt Co., I can save you 10% by using the coupon code Crazy Sharp, all one word, capital C, capital S, Crazy Sharp, one word, saves you 10%. If you send me pictures of you wearing my merchandise, I will put them in the videos. Guys, I love you all. Keep it clean in the comments section. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. And I will see you in the next video. And I literally broke a sweat just doing that outro. Jesus, I am weak.